dear Archbishop Salvatore, dear brothers and sisters, it's uh, some months ago that I discovered something in the reading of today, uh, and it has struck me so much that I, I began to, to search uh, and uh, in the last months I have had, as I do every two years, uh, I meet with all the priests of the diocese uh, in groups, uh, always one entire day, morning and afternoon, to share about faith, about pastoral questions. Uh, so I don't know whether Pius uh, Padre Pio has already participated in one of these meetings. Uh, I didn't ask him before. Uh, so he may have already heard what I will tell you now. Uh, but for that, I must locate the reading of today in, in uh, the whole frame in the Acts of the Apostles. You remember that was the reading, reading of last Saturday. Um, uh, Paul and, uh, and his uh, companion, uh, they, they are going through Asia Minor, today Turkey, uh, preaching the gospel. Uh, and they had different plans to go there, here and there, but the St. Luke says that uh, the Spirit uh, prevented them from preaching in this, uh, in this area. So they had to go elsewhere. I don't know how the Spirit prevents us from going one direction instead of another. Uh, but finally they arrived in Troas. Uh, that's the antique Troja, uh, uh, the Homerian Troja. And there, during night, Paul had a vision. A Macedonian stood before him and implored him with these words, come over to Macedonia and help us. When we had seen, he had seen this vision, we thought, passage to Macedonia at once, concluding that God has called us to proclaim the good news to them. There have been many meditations about this passage because it's the pas passage of the gospel to Europe. Uh, before Paul has only preached in Asia, Asia Minor, in the Holy Land, in Syria, in, uh, in what is today Turkey. But there they get a call from Greece, from Macedonia, come over and help us. Uh, of course, historically we can say probably the gospel had already reached Europe. Uh, uh, Rome had already a Christian community. Uh, but Somehow it is symbolic, this call uh, of a Greek, a Macedonian, to, uh, uh, in this vision that Paul has had. And uh, so the gospel comes to Europe. And uh, it is very moving to, to think about that passage. How did the gospel come to us? Uh, and how did it continue to cross all kinds of borders? So uh, the next step was that they took a ship uh, and uh, came to Samotrace and then to Neapolis and finally to Filippi. Filippi was a leading city in the district of Macedonia, and it was a Roman colony. It was a Roman military base. 
And there, they, um, they searched uh, on Shabbat. Uh, uh, there was no synagogue, so they, they were looking for a place of prayer. And they found this place along the river. And they found some women praying there. <coughs> And uh, one of them, one of these women, a woman named Lydia, a dealer of purple cloth, <coughs> very precious. So she seemed to be quite wealthy. Uh, listened. She was not a Jew, she was a worshiper of God. She was close to Judaism. <coughs> And the Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what Paul was saying. Yesterday, at the funeral of uh, our dear auxiliary bishop in the cathedral, St. Stephen's Cathedral, I preached about this passage. It's so beautiful. Paul preaches, but the Lord opens the heart. We can preach, but if the Lord does not open the heart, the word does not reach. So Lydia received the word. And symbolically, we can say she is the first Christian in Europe, symbolically, in the, in the Acts of the Apostles. The gospel reaches Europe, the gospel reaches the heart, of a woman as the first to receive the message of the resurrection, the reality of the resurrection was a woman, Mary Maudlin. So here in Europe it is a woman named Lydia who first received the word of the gospel because the Lord has opened her heart. And she hosted uh, Paul uh, and uh, Silas. Uh, she offered us an invitation. Luke is present at this, at this event. It's a we passage in the Acts of the Apostles. Uh, she offered us an invitation. If you consider me a believer of the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed on us. She insisted, you must stay with me. Yeah. Women can be very insistent. Uh, uh, and that's important for the, the way of the gospel. So the, so the first Christian community was born in Europe, uh, symbolically, uh, in the house of Lydia. But then things became complicated. Uh, I do not tell all the st story that uh, is between. There was uh, a maiden of a of a wealthy man who had a spirit of prophecy, but a, a demonic prof, a demonic spirit. Uh, and she always cried behind Paul and Silas, they are the true believers. They are the be believers in the true God. And one day, and they con she continued to cry behind them. And one day, uh, Paul became angry and casted out the spirit of prophecy that was in her. She was delivered, but her, her boss was angry because she had brought in quite a lot of money through her prophecies. So uh, this man uh, uh, made a lot of uh, tried to protest um, uh, and, and uh, uh, a crowd in Philippi joined 
uh, in to attack Paul and Silas. And the magistrate had them stripped and ordered them to be beaten with rods. So, flagellation, terrible punishment, still exists in quite a good number of, or bad number of countries. Uh, and here, uh, I draw your attention to something strange, but you will discover it soon. Paul and Silas were received flagellation and they were put into prison. And then comes all the story we have heard in jail. Uh, during night they prayed, uh, singing hymns to God as the prisoners listened. And suddenly an earthquake. <coughs> and all the chains fell and the doors opened. <coughs> Uh, when the jailer woke up and saw that the prison, prison doors were open, he tried to kill himself because he thought they have all escaped. But Paul, uh, do not harm yourself, we are all here. And then comes the conversion of this man and his whole family. And uh, uh, he took them in his house, bathed their wounds, then they were baptized at once. was a sh short catechesis uh, during uh, just some, some hours in the night, but they were so moved that they accepted faith so immediately. And uh, then they uh, had a meal, which certainly was also a Eucharist, and great joy in the household. Why do I insist on all these these details you have you have already heard? Because the next morning the Roman authorities came and said to the jailer, let these people go free. And Paul says, listen, stop. Why should we leave now? Uh, we have been flagellate uh, despite our Roman citizenship. When the Roman authorities heard that they were Roman citizens, they were afraid because uh, this punishment uh, of flagellation was absolutely prohibited for Roman citizens. So this Paul, Paul said, these authorities, they must come and apologize and accompany out, us out of the prison. So they came very intimidated, said, oh, we apologize. We didn't know that you are Roman citizens. Uh, and they were, they feared because they could receive a big punishment if, if, if it was known that they were Roman citizens. Why do I tell you all these things? Because I, I came myself to a, to a question. Why didn't Paul and Silas say, we are Roman citizens, you have not the right uh, to strip and uh, to beat us with rods? Why didn't they say, we are Roman citizens? You remember, you all know the Bible well, uh, in chapter 22 in the Acts, a similar situation happens in Jerusalem when uh, the Jewish uh, parties, Sadducean and Pharisees, were disputing about Paul and uh, the Roman uh, captain came and took Paul 
um, uh, to save him, but then he, he wanted to, to beat him uh, with, with rods uh, to know what is, what is the question. And Paul said, sorry, I am Roman citizen. You have not the right to beat me. And the, 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 the captain said, oh, so, sorry, sorry. Um, where did you get a Roman citizenship? That's very rare to get it. Um, I have paid a lot of money to get it. And Paul says, I am born Roman citizen. Why didn't say, he say that here in Philippi? So I have no, no answer to it. But see, I have an answer. If you remember, later St. Paul will write a letter to the community of Philippi. And you feel the whole love he, he has to the community. He has founded himself. Uh, and in this letter, there is the famous hymn of, in chapter 2 of the letter to the Philippians. Uh, that we sing in, in, in Vespers all Saturday evening, uh, every week we have this hymn, a famous hymn of the letter to the Philippians, where it is said, uh, he who was uh, God by nature, was in God form, he, I don't know it in English by heart, I can quote it in Greek, ekenosen uh, heoton, he emptied himself and took the form of a slave. He humbled himself. Uh, uh, and he was obedient, obedient till the death and the death of the cross. Therefore, God has elevated him and given him the name that is over all names, so that all knees may bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, and proclaim, Jesus is the Lord, to the glory of the Father. So my meditation is, and that's what I, sorry to be a little bit long, uh, but uh, it, 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 str it strikes me, why didn't Paul say, sorry, I am a Roman citizen, why he accepted to be humiliated, to be, uh, uh, to be beaten, and uh, because he knew that Jesus did the same. He humbled himself. He did not insist on his divine nature, divine glory. He became like a slave. And Paul, who had met the Lord on the way to Damascus, and had, I can, yes, we can say, fallen in love of Jesus, so that Jesus became his life. Uh, when he came into this situation, uh, the magistrate, magistrate uh, stripped them. Uh, took off their, their, their vestments and began to beat them with rods. Paul did not react as it was, would be normal. He humiliated himself. And the fruit of this humiliation is the conversion of this whole family. The, the prison guard and uh, the jailer and his whole family and his whole house. So, uh, I, I have not come to an end with my meditation about, about this strange, uh, strange acting of Paul. But in the chapter 3 of the letter to Philippians, he has a very beautiful expression I want to end with that. Uh, uh, 
beginnes de summimetai mu. Become my co-imitators, literally. Imitate myself. Uh, how can Paul say, take himself as an example? He can do it because he has imitated Jesus. Uh, and humbling himself, he followed Jesus. And therefore he can say to the community of Philippi, his beloved community he has founded, become ma sum mimetai, become mimetai, imitators with me of Christ. So that's what I wanted to share with you. It's this little discovery that brought me to all this meditation. Why Paul can write this to his community in Philippi? Because he had himself actively followed Jesus in his humiliation. <laughs>